today I want to present uh, SharePoint syntax and I want to focus on some new functionality for content assembly, which is similar to modern mail merge, which you may have used in Word, but this is a modern version. So a little bit about me. My name is Leon Armston and I'm an M365 solutions consultant at IntelliJ in London in the United Kingdom. I've worked quite a bit with Syntex and even evaluated it when it was part of the unknown project Cortex for release. I've took quite an interest in SharePoint Syntex over the past around 18 months as more and more great functionalities come to Syntex and you can really see the power of it. I've used Syntex with quite a few customers to build some great integrated intelligent solutions. You can find details on how you can connect with me through my blog or Twitter or LinkedIn. So today I want to give a quick intro to SharePoint Syntax and then I want to give a demo of uh, content assembly and a few more Syntax features. And then I want to give you some steps on how and information on how to find out more or learn more about SharePoint Syntax. So there may be some people on this call that are experts at SharePoint Syntax who have used it lots. Uh, there may be some people that have perhaps installed the trial, had a play about with SharePoint Syntax and maybe not seen the true power or the new functionality of SharePoint Syntax. And then there might be some people even that are like, what is SharePoint Syntax? So uh, to answer that question, in Microsoft's own words, SharePoint Syntax uses advanced AI and machine teaching to amplify human expertise, automate content processing, and transform content into knowledge. So the idea is you use Syntax to create an AI model, and there are two main concepts for the model. So documents are classified, i.e. your model is trained to target a particular type of document. So you set your model to pick out um, invoices or statements of work or contracts, for example. And then within that model as well, you set it to extract uh, metadata. So you create rules to extract, say, for a contract, a, a contract ID or contractor am amount or who, are, who the contract's to or their date, for example. And then to extract and classify this two main uh, features, uh, well, it features to uh, extract data and that's forms processing. So the concept of forms processing that uses machine learning, which is part of AI Builder to identify and extract key value pairs and table data from structured or semi-structured documents. So as the name says, uh, it's good for forms or invoices where yeah, there's reliable uh, structured data in front of in your targeting a particular section on a particular piece on the form. Then there is document understanding, which works best for unstructured documents, such as letters or contracts that have text that can be identified from phrases or patterns. So document understanding, so your documents could be one page, uh, the next document might be two pages, three pages, it's variable lengths and the metadata might be on different uh, that you want to extract might be on like different pages per, per document. And then the third one that I've mentioned is content compliance. So because we're picking out particular types of documents, uh, we could set a retention label to whenever there's a statement of work, say it has to be retained for seven years or or longer, and we can also do the same with sensitivity labels. So now there's some great um, advanced uh, syntax features coming to the product, uh, such as contents assembly, which I'm covering today, and other vertical solutions such as contract management, etc. So about contents assembly, it was released quite recently at the end of January this year. It enables you to use an existing Microsoft Word document to create a modern template and then use that template to automatically generate new Microsoft Word documents and using SharePoint lists or manual user inputs as a data source. 
So it helps you to automatically generate standard repetitive documents such as contract statements of work, service agreements, for example. A SharePoint syntax license is required to, to do that. And you also need managed list permissions on a library to um, use content assembly. And this is what Microsoft um, talk about uh, is the typical content lifecycle. So syntax has been made to support the concept that most organizations will have in their organization. The idea is that content comes in, it's processed, so it might be processed by syntax to extract the metadata, and then you have to respond to it. So that could be using the metadata in a workflow, it could be manual process, and then you, you're going to do something with it. So it might be yeah, that we use content assembly, uh, the whole purpose of this presentation to create a new document to respond to that content. And then secondly, and then finally, that document is say sent out for signature, that maybe comes back a few months later, signed, and then it's fed back in and a syntax model picks it up again. So the idea is there might be many different uh, content life cycles. So I now want to demo uh, content assembly. So here we have a list of superstars. Uh, this is a SharePoint list, and we have um, these superstars have been submitting to the PMP uh, repositories and doing pull requests, etc. So we want to reward them for their um, contribution. So we want to send them a letter outlining this. So. First of all, I'm going to do this all from scratch. So we're just going to create a new document library. So we'll call this PMP rewards. And now I'm going to show you how to set up a modern template. So in every library, uh, you can create a modern template if you've got syntax uh, license or you've got and you've got managed list permissions. So we go create a modern template. We upload a document from our computer, an existing document. This is then uploaded to um, the library, and we then have this template engine here. So the document is then loaded up, and we want to change these placeholders that I've created into actual syntax content assembly placeholders. So I'll then name this, name my placeholder, and then I need to select which SharePoint list or document library to get my data from. So I it could be on a different site, but this is the same site. So I want to go to this superstars list here. Now I need to map uh, the field. So I've got a field called location name that I'm going to map that to. I could allow authors to add new choices if I'm not happy with those choices. And now I've just got to map uh, the other fields. And it's the same process again, apologies. One uh, thing you did see there was uh, it's um, if you uh, tab out of it, uh, it doesn't automatically save. You have to actively go add. So we, we've lost that. So we'll now just uh, do the date and skip the city. You can have uh, manual fields. So we could have uh, when the document is generated, we ask them for a date and time. So that's what I want to do here. And now I want to ensure that this letter goes to PMP Parker here. So I'm going to call this name and go back to my superstars list. And I know that the name is in the title here. So I'm going to add that now. I'm going to change the name of the templates. 
And now I'm going to publish uh, this template here. So that's now published and available in my library. So if I go to the new uh, section, I can go to my PMP recognition letter here. And now if I go to name here, I can select PMP Parker here. And we're going to produce a letter for, for him. And now I select, I want it to be today's date. I'll call this. PMP Parker, the name of the letter. And now it will create the document really quickly. So I can now go into this and see that PMP Parker's uh, got a letter. He's at the Microsoft corporate office and it gives him all the instructions to sign up to Credly and get his PMP uh, badges. So you may be wondering, yeah, why can't we do this in automated or why can't why isn't there an API to do this? Um, so I've spoken with Microsoft about this and then I've shared to them that yeah, an API would be good, uh, would be good to do bulk automation. Um, so yeah, they have acknowledged that um, this feedback and are working on something for later in the year. Their best guess is late summer, early fall, subject to change, of course. And uh, I've got to thank uh, Ian Story of the Syntex team for, uh, for allowing me to say that without breaking NDA. So now I just want to show you uh, quickly the content uh, lifecycle. So the idea is where I spoke, where content can be created, content can be action um, and it keeps going around. So there is a contract management uh, template uh, that is available in the SharePoint lookbook. So I'm just going to show. So here we could request a contract. So uh, Clippy has requested a contract uh, for PMP Parker. I'm not going to go through this, but it does have workflows behind the scenes. Uh, so I'm not going to show the workflow process, but I'm going to show you all the libraries. So we can then see in the that uh, the, that contract request was approved. And we can see that the contract has been created for PMP Parker and yeah, various details about a community demo and the the fit it's a high high value contract of yeah nine 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 so then uh that contract might be emailed out posted um out and then it's received back as a pdf so on this library we have a syntax model so a person might upload it in here and the syntax model extracts the fee amount, the contractor, the client, and then we can do stuff like that with that. So we can do a workflow. Um, so we could, yeah, when the contract is popped out, this could perhaps go to the CEO to say, please approve, please review and approve. So we have an adaptive card there that we can action. Then, once that's been approved, it will go out to the payout list. And then that could be picked up by a workflow. It could go to a third party finance system who could make the payment automatically or, or it could be a manual uh, payment. Now we want to produce a payment receipt to uh, PMP Parker to say we paid you. So that's that's being produced. So that's the contract management uh, template in SharePoint Lookbook. Uh, you're free to download it as long as you've got a SharePoint syntax license. But yeah, that gives you an idea of like a contract management accelerator. So I'm now going to return to my slides. I now want to bring to your attention some information on how to get started with syntax or how to further contribute to syntax. So in uh, the PMP uh, GitHub organization, there is a repository for syntax samples. So this contains community submitted uh, document understanding model templates, which you can download and deploy to your tenant today 
and uh, yeah, see how other people are using syntax. See how Microsoft are using syntax. It has all the documents, and yeah, gives you a great start to see yeah how to use uh, syntax. There is some lots of other information on that site on how to get started with syntax. Um, and to template models, so perhaps you have a pre-production environment where you've created some models and you want to move them to production, you can use the good old PMP provisioning engine to um, with get PMP site template and invoke PMP site template to move them across between environments. Or you could template your model and yeah, create a pull request and add it to the PMP syntax uh, samples. Within PMP PowerShell as well, there are five syntax commandlets. So that's really good for seeing what models are applied to a site, uh, pushing it out to many different sites, so multiple hundreds of sites, unpublishing uh, models. There's lots of yeah powerful commandlets there. This is a contract management template that I was talking about on Tuesday. Uh, Sean Squires did a good uh, demonstration on the M365 platform call of the SharePoint lookbook uh, syntax uh, template. So I'm not going to talk uh, any more about these, but yeah, I recommend you catching that great session to see uh, Sean talk about these and how you can get started. But there is a, a syntax content center which has yeah, lots of additional information and links uh, on how to get started with uh, SharePoint syntax. Uh, a few links here, you might want to take a print screen um, on how to get started, but as I mentioned, I took quite an interest in SharePoint syntax. I've created lots of blogs about it, so if you go to my blog, so here's a short link, bit.ly slash Leon Syntax Series, or go to that QR code. It'll take you to all my blogs on SharePoint Syntax. And there's a few, I'm not going to list all of these out, but there's Syntax resources from Microsoft, adoption guides uh, from Microsoft, a filtered view of the Syntax roadmap, and a a place to give feedback about SharePoint syntax to the product team. And then there's Microsoft uh, Learn modules uh, to get started, get learning about uh, SharePoint syntax. So that's the end of my presentation today. I want to thank you all for watching and seeing the power of content assembly and also yeah, the power of syntax and yeah, a lot, lots more to come from syntax. Uh, feel free to connect me or ask me any questions about SharePoint syntax or connect, yeah, Twitter, LinkedIn or GitHub. Okay, thank you very much. Leon, awesome stuff. Really, really cool. Love how you went into depth and showing all that and had some fun with it at the same time. Really shows how uh, collaborative and fun the community can be. So excellent job. Thank you.